What's up my fellow Shield Brothers? Shield Brothers 6 here with yet another installment of our A Day in the Life. And today we'll be talking about the armament of the Vikings. And no, not the football team, but I'm talking about the Viking Age and the Nordic Raiders. Let's get started for today. Here's a quick disclaimer, just because it's such an extensive period. Knowledge about military technology of the Viking Age is based on relatively sparse archaeological findings. So, also based on accounts of the Norse sagas and laws recorded in the 13th century. So everything I might say may not be entirely correct, and there's also a lot of variations on what scholars accept for the armament of the Viking Age. And with that disclaimer, we're going to get into today's video. Who were the Vikings? Vikings were seafaring raiders and pirates from the Dark Age or early medieval Scandinavia, Norway, Finland, Sweden, etc. As a people, they were known as the Norse. The word Viking is often applied to all seafaring Norsemen at that time, although it originally meant raiders specifically. The Vikings, as raiders, were famous for attacking Britain and France. Norsemen, as seafarers, traveled as far as Baghdad and as far east as North America 500 years before Columbus. And I meant west, not east. My bad. <laughs> Let's talk about their weapons. The hand weapons. There were two main hand weapons, per se, that the Viking Age used. For instance, there were the knife or the sax and their sword. The sax was their iconic weapon, which you can see there depicted next to the hand weapons. That is their iconic weapon that they used for hunting as well as combat and as survival. It was an all-round tool and the long, there was two types. There was the short one, which was more of a utility knife that we might use today. And then the longer versions were meant for warfare more specifically. It was a simple blade with a tang and the blade ended with a sweeping upward tip and the broken back. And then their sword. The sword was the Vi very iconic Viking Age sword, but it was not significant only to the Vikings. It was used by a lot of different peoples, but it's known as the Viking sword for say. It was roughly about 90 centimeters long and it was double edged. And it was very similar still kind of to the Roman spata. Uh, spata, spata. It was not exclusive, however, at all to the Vikings, although it's kind of known to be. The pole arms. There was a lot of pole arms also used by the Vikings of the Viking Age and others. For instance, there was the spears and the Danax. The Danax is an iconic one that was used throughout, and it's almost single-handedly the most referenced and recognizable weapon of the Vikings. The Dane Axe was a very long wooden axe which was about 3 or 4 feet long and it had a large single sided head, uh, headed axe. And then the spears were the uh, common weapon of the Scandinavian peasant class and there was also throwing spears and there was two types of spearhead used. The first spearhead was the one with the wings to keep it from going in too far was called the Kroksbjort or the hooked spear in the sagas. And then there was also a larger headed spear which was called the Hogsbjort which was a chopping spear and could also be used for cutting and slicing. So let's continue. There was also ranged weaponry that was used by the Viking Age. There was the bows and the throwing spears. The throwing spears were, uh, they were very simple, you know, consisted of metal heads with a blade and a hollow shaft, mounted on wooden shafts of two to three meters in length, which were typically made out of ash wood, very easy to throw, easy to retract, great use for ranged weaponry. There was also the bows. The bow and arrow was used both for hunting and in battle. They were made from yew, ash, or elm, and the draw force of a 10th century bow may have reached some 90 pounds or 400 newtons or more, resulting in an effective range of at least 200 meters, 600 feet, depending on the weight of the arrow, you could take down an elk or a man from up to 600 feet away, 660 feet, and maybe even more or less depending on the weight of the arrowhead and the wood, which is very strong, and I find that great, like, because a lot of people think that the Vikings are simple-minded for sentence, and the Scandinavians were kind of dull, and couldn't make good weaponry, which that's not true, because their sword skills that they made and their Dane axes were outstanding for the times, and they could rival anything else that was being made, especially since they became traders, so they became having access to all types of resources and learning. And then their bows were great, like, these were not dumb people, they were strong people that were 
well traversed in the realms of hunting and warfare as well as trading. So their armor, let's get into their armor. And that's a relatively normal depiction of a Viking warrior or raider. The shields, the most iconic one is the round shield. The shield was the most common means of defense always. They were usually made out of fir or alder or poplar and they did not split. Unlike oak shields that were used commonly, they did not split because of the type of wood used. And then the shield wall is the most iconic formation used when at war. It was also called the Skjaldborg, was also a main formation. And there was also just, how should I put this? It's such a beautiful work. It's used in many different eras and times. The shield wall is great. I love the shield wall. There was other notable tactics, however, that were included, such as the Svilking, or the Boar Snout, in which warriors would create kind of a wedge, and they would try to burst through the other opposing shield wall. And then, as far as the Kite Shield, it has been proposed that the medieval era Kite Shield, favored by the Normans, was introduced to Europe by the Vikings. However, there's not a lot of docu documentation or archaeological finds to back that, although it is starting to become... Uh, a favorable explanation to where the kite shield came from. The body armor. The helmet. And no, the Vikings did not use horned helmets. One more time for the people in the back. The Vikings did not use horned helmets. I can't believe some people still believe that. The, 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 the Vikings had horns. I mean, yes, that some... Helmets have been fined with metal antlers or horns that were used for ceremonial purposes of worshipping the gods, but the the warrior's helm did not have horns, people. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Common helmets had a rounded cap, and there is evidence that they also had mail to protect the neck. It has a spectacle guard and around the eyes to make kind of a mask, which suggests a close affinity with the earlier Vandal period helmets. From runestones and other illustrations that archaeologists have found, it is known that the Vikings also wore simpler helmets, often just metal caps or leather caps with a simple nose guard. Mail. The mail worn by Vikings was almost certainly the four-on-one type, which was four solid punched or riveted rings and connected by a single riveted ring, very strong. Mail of this type is known as Yerni in Old Norse for Grinia. Given that Vikings on a raid tried to avoid pitched battles, it's possible that the mail was primarily worn only by the professional warriors going into battle, such as the great heathen army of the mid 9th century in England, or at Harold Hardrada's invasion of Northumbria in the Battle of Stamford Bridge in 1066. And if you have seen the show Vikings, which is not historically accurate, but a great show nonetheless, yes, that's the same great heathen army that they are referring to. Here's more body armor. There's also a cloth and leather used, especially in quilted cloths of a gambeson. Which is, gambeson is kind of layered fabric that's out very, very well, it's very well made for uh, combat. Although, crossbows and long bones usually could pierce it, well, not all the way. So you would feel some force, but you would not um, get punctured. So gambeson was a very good armor used by many different peoples from the Normans to the Vikings, very, and the English especially, the Gambeson was a very good armor used for the lower classes. And some rune stones depict what appears to be armor which is not likely not male, which is where we get this idea from, as well as it's very well known that other kingdoms and peoples at the time were using such. So it is very likely that the average Viking fought whilst wearing ordinary clothes though, with just a sword as protection. So just like normal linen cloth, just normal clothes with a sword in the field or a sword in the spear, etc. That's what's believed to be the norm for the Viking Raiders. Well thank you for watching, this has been another a day in the life. I hope you learned something about the Vikings, I hope you enjoyed. As always, please leave a like, please leave a dislike, or please leave a comment. And as always, this has been Shield Brother 6, and I'll catch you next time.